Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. Check out what I've got on the bench today. This is the Quav S2 frame, which has been designed in collaboration with Johnny FPV. Now, if you don't know who he is, he's a legendary FPV pilot who's had a real impact on how filmmakers see FPV drones as cinematic tools. Now, just in case you're wondering, no, if you buy this frame, you will not fly like Johnny FPV. However, it is pretty cool to think that your equipment is capable of getting those amazing cinematic shots. It's just up to you to go out there and get them. For this build, I'm gonna be using an Argus Pro 55 amp F7 stack from Axis Flying, and these new 2307 Johnny FPV edition motors from Lumineer. I'm super excited about these motors because usually when it comes to five inch quads, we talk about whether we should go with 2207s or 2306s, and each has its own advantages. But by going with 2307s, we should have more than enough power and thrust to lift the cameras and batteries we want, and the 1750 kV should give us some nice, smooth flights with 6S batteries. In this video, I'm going to give you guys a real close look at this frame, and we're going to talk about some of the innovations and design choices that have been made. There will be timestamps if you prefer to skip around, but before we jump in, please take a second, make sure you're subscribed, and hit that notification bell, because I will have more content about this drone that you'll want to see. Slowly, it's gonna open. Come on, come on. Ah. This is what you get in the box with this frame kit. The carbon is nice and smooth. It seems like it's coated. These are six millimeter thick arms, so you're not gonna break those anytime soon, unless, of course, you try to. The top plate has the Johnny FPV logo embossed there on top. It looks Pretty cool, that's a nice touch. You get loads of machined aluminum parts, and I'm excited to see how this um, X plate goes together to hold the arms in place. The hardware comes in this organizer, and all the screws and nuts are clearly labeled, which is a nice touch that should make the build a little bit easier. I did notice that you get two rear plates, it looks like, for different antenna setups, whether you want a double antenna setup or a single antenna setup, and it looks like you get two camera plates for 20 millimeter cameras and 19 millimeter cameras. And best of all, look, it's got a smiley face. You do get two molded plastic GoPro mounts, a battery mount, of course, some foam landing feet, and I think this is an interesting choice. I actually use foam landing feet on a lot of my quads. I know some people prefer TPU arm guards, but those add a lot of weight. And you have to ask yourself, are they really necessary? Because if they are necessary, well then you can print some up. But if they're not necessary, TPU is adding a lot of weight to your frame, and these foam landing feet will get the job done, and they save some weight. You'll notice that there's no TPU in this frame kit, which is pretty rare because most frame kits that are on the market right now have a pile of TPU parts. Instead of TPU, Lumineer has gone for aluminum, carbon fiber where possible, molded plastic, and they've really chosen to use premium parts in this frame kit. You get two very nice Lumineer battery straps. I like these. They're incredibly strong. You're not gonna break them. Another nice touch are these long battery leads, which are intended for use with this captured XT60 connector, which goes out the back. I noticed that these battery leads are long because usually I have to make my own battery leads in order to run the lead out the back of the quad, which is the way I prefer it because it gives me maximum flexibility to fly with different size batteries without getting that lead uh, close to the props like it would be if it went out the side. If you've never built up a Lumineer frame before, this instruction manual will be a very nice surprise to you because it has actual instructions written in English by people who actually speak English. And that's a real nice change because in our hobby, most FPV frames come with something really simple like a single sheet exploded diagram and you're left wondering which length of screws go where, how do you put the arms together, but not in this case. The instruction manual is nice and detailed, 
very clear with steps explaining what you have to do. This is a nice touch. All right, you guys, I opened up my hardware bag. I've got everything ready for step one and I'm gonna start building. So let's get to it. All right, you guys, it's build time. I realize that you can't see all the details on a time lapse, but don't worry, I'm gonna give you guys some close-up shots in just a minute. And I know an electric driver would make this process much faster, but hey, I love my hand tools. I just like to hand tighten to the exact torque that I want. I'm not in a hurry. Drone building time is my happy time. Here's a few tips when you're putting this frame together. Just take your time. Grab a bevy of your choice and enjoy the process. Be careful with those screws because you get the exact amount of screws you need for the build and you do not want a critical screw falling into the carpet. Also, pay attention to those diagrams in the instruction manual because sometimes the written instructions don't specify whether you should use a button head screw or a countersunk screw. The instruction manual has you install the top plate in step six, then mentions the air unit parts in step seven. I ended up doing a dry assembly of the frame first because I did have a problem with a missing M2.5 eight millimeter screw. Also, I wasn't sure of which rear plate I was going to use. Normally, I'd go for a rear mounted GPS, but since we do have the option to mount a rear camera, I really wanted to take advantage of that unique feature of this frame. This is the first time I've put together a frame with Lumineer's X-Lock system, but everything goes together smoothly. That detailed instruction manual is very nice to have, even if you're a veteran drone builder. All right, you guys, now I wanna give you some close-up shots and tell you how my build went. The first thing that you'll notice once you complete your build is how solid this frame feels in the hand. Lumineer has chosen to use premium materials. The carbon feels great, it's nice and smooth, there's no uh, sharp edges or anything, and these machined aluminum parts, they work great and they look great. That copper is set off against the black and it looks just super sexy. This is an awesome looking frame. One of the main features of this frame is the X-Lock system. It's a simple design that just makes a lot of sense. It uses an aluminum X piece right here combined with two aluminum wedges on either side. The X piece holds the arms in place and as you tighten this M3 screw through these aluminum wedges, the wedges lock the arms against the X plate. Then you use one more M3 screw which passes through the arm through the standoff to lock them in place. It's a really smart design because it means you can swap out an arm just by removing this one screw and then loosening this X-lock. I also noticed that your stack screws do not go through the carbon fiber arms. I think that's a good design choice because it means the vibrations from the motors which are transferred through the arms won't be transferred to your flight controller as easily and it should make the drone a little bit easier to tune. Another big innovation with this drone is this rear assembly. I'm not sure what you call this part right here, but it's probably the sexiest back end you'll ever see on an FPV drone. It's made up of four aluminum pieces and the captured XT60 connector. There's two standoffs and two side plates, which give you three tilt options. If I were flying with GPS, I might tilt it back like this. If I were flying with a rear camera on the back, I might actually change that angle depending on how I want my camera angle to be. When I first saw this, I wasn't quite sure how I felt about putting the X-T60 on the actual rear plate because most frames will put it up front or in the rear right here. But after having the frame put together, it makes a lot of sense to me. And the reason is a front X-T60 will interfere with the GoPro when you say tilt the GoPro back and a rear X-T60 will interfere in your battery mounting space. By putting the XT60 back here on the rear assembly, you have tons of space for mounting a battery. The flexibility of this rear assembly is awesome. You get five different plates. A standard plate if you don't wanna mess around with GPS or a rear mounted camera, two plates intended for mounting GPS units, and two plates intended for mounting a rear camera. These camera plates are thicker to be able to support the weight of a camera back here, and the reason you get two different plates is 
One is intended for a DJI-03 or a similar system that has a single antenna, and another one is intended for a system that has dual antennas. I think having a rear-mounted camera option out of the box is pretty cool. It really sets this frame apart. I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing around with a camera back there and see what kind of creative shots I can get. Here's an example of how you might use that rear camera mount. Of course, you could mount the camera facing behind you, but it might be cool to mount something like an Insta360 Go on an arm. You could get a pretty unique shot by filming the drone itself flying through some sort of unique scenery. This frame is optimized for the DJI-03, and it comes with these aluminum standoffs for mounting the air unit and a soft mounting system for mounting the DJI-03 camera. I like these aluminum mounts for the air unit better than 3D prints because they're strong and simple and they allow the air unit to breathe. Since it's basically just a riser to allow for better cooling, it also provides a convenient niche for your cable routing underneath. Just be careful not to pinch your cables when you tighten down the mount when you're doing your build. The FPV camera mount uses two carbon plates bolted onto this aluminum side plate and it is soft mounted with these rubber grommets. You can change the camera angle up and down, of course, but you can also move the camera forward and backwards, which is a nice idea because if I have the camera back like this, it's protected in the event of a crash. But if I want to get some usable cinematic shots for my DJI 03 camera, I might want to move it forward like that to make sure I don't have props in view. The spacing of these rubber grommets is directional, meaning they provide slightly more space if they're flipped around, so you can install cameras of different thickness with the same plates. The diagram and the instructions don't specify which way they should go, but it doesn't matter because they're reversible. Be careful inserting those rubber grommets into the carbon camera plates because you don't get any extras and you don't want to break one. You can use the dental floss trick, but I just use a small driver. These eight millimeter screws do bottom out inside the camera, and I'm assuming that that's on purpose because it seems to have just the right amount of dampening, but it also means that if you want to firm up that mount, you'd have to swap the screws out. You do get another set of camera plates just in case you want to use a 19 millimeter camera. If you're using a DJI 03 or something with a similar antenna, you probably want to install that rubber grommet into the carbon fiber plate first, then pass the UFL connectors through the hole. You should also consider using zip ties. Otherwise, this antenna will be loose. If you hit a branch, it could pull the antenna wires right out of the air unit. These molded plastic GoPro mounts can be a little bit hard to install. You have to push it down and then forward, and it will snap into place securely, but take your time. Too much force could damage the plastic or even crack the carbon plate, and you do need to install that carbon spacer on top of the plate, not underneath it. Once you get this mount installed, you want to make sure that the hole for the screw is perfectly lined up with the press nut in the carbon plate. If you don't send that screw in perfectly straight, you'll be putting sideways pressure on the press nut and it could pop out of the carbon and you could even strip out a screw. To be honest with you guys, I have some mixed feelings about these camera mounts. They're simple, I think they look nice, and I do think that molded plastic mounts can be stronger than TPU mounts. Also, I think it's gonna be awesome to get some creative shots with this rear camera mount back there. But, and there is a but, they can be such a pain to install. I really had to take my time to get this mount to fit into the, uh, the plate with that spacer. It was really difficult. And that could be a real disadvantage if I wanted to remove it and install it quickly. For example, let's say I wanted to use this rear camera mount and I needed to move my battery all the way to the front in order to balance center of gravity. In theory, the single screw design of this camera mount should mean that it's easy to remove and install, but in practice, it can be really difficult to get these to pop into the carbon plate. Let me know what you guys think about these molded plastic lock-in camera mounts as opposed to, say, a standard TPU mount. Which one do you think is better? I do think that having a rear GoPro mount as well as the one up front is a very cool idea and it sets this frame apart from a lot of the other frames that are out there. Also, the X-Lock system is super innovative and I wouldn't be surprised if you see a bunch of frame manufacturers copying this design in the next few years. 
I love the style of this frame. You can really tell that it was born from real hardcore FPV pilots. They don't add a bunch of bling that you don't need, like TPU landing feet and those plastic motor guards that break in a crash anyway, but they do give you a generous portion of quality and innovation. This frame isn't perfect and there are a few small details that Lumineer could have done a little bit better. For example, they could have been a little bit more generous with their hardware. They pretty much give you exactly the hardware that you need to complete the build, but that means that if the guy that's in charge of filling up that hardware bag makes a mistake, you could have a real problem. I did have a problem with the missing screw. My hardware bag had an extra M2 8mm screw instead of the two M2.5 8mm screws that you need to install this rear plate. Fortunately, I had some extra 9mm M2.5 screws, which actually fit the rear plate a little bit better. I'm sure this is because I'm working with an early sample and it won't be an issue with the final production units, but be sure to check your hardware bag. Lumineer support is really great and they'll definitely take care of you if something like that were to happen. My suggestion for Lumineer would be to include an extra type of each screw in the hardware kit. That way, a single missing screw won't keep you grounded. Another thing I wonder about is how much weight you might be able to put on this rear camera plate. For example, can you use a full GoPro or are you limited to something like a GoPro Bones or a naked GoPro? And the reason that I say that is all that weight is going to be supported by these M2.5 screws which are going through an XT60 connector. It does seem super solid, it's not going anywhere, but I wonder if that could be an issue in the future if you're using a heavy camera. Another small detail is that the hardware they give you is not pre-threadlocked. I only mention this because some other frame kits do provide pre-threadlocked screws, so it would have been nice to see this here because there's so many aluminum parts. It's not a big deal, but I would recommend using thread lock when you put your frame kit together with any screws that go into aluminum. This frame is full of premium materials and it has some very cool design innovations. You can tell that the designers at Lumineer spent the money where it counts, like the aluminum rear structure and the X-Lock system, and they don't waste your time with bling that you don't really need. All right, you guys, that's gonna wrap up my review of this frame kit. I will be doing a build video with some test flights. That'll be up on my channel soon, so please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. I really appreciate you guys being here. Feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions about this frame or anything else. I always do my best to answer them. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.